And all eyes are on OpenAI this week as well. The OpenAI CEO, Sam Altman, prepares to testify before Congress for the first time tomorrow. Bob O'Donnell, tech analysis research president and chief analyst, is back with us. And you've been watching this one closely. What, what are the kind of top takeaways that you would be looking for or expecting to hear from this testimony? Well, I mean, the big questions that are out there are around things like safety, uh, security, and frankly, there's copyright concerns, right? I mean, the way these things work, at least certainly the way the open AI models work, is essentially they sucked in all the data off the internet, you know, and then processed through it to create their algorithms. Well, in the process of doing that, obviously they sucked in things that were theoretically copyrighted. Um, and so the question is, how can you tell what's going to come out of this? Now, this is not unique to them, by the way. Uh, everybody who's doing this, if they bring in all that content, is going to have these issues. But I think the other big concerns are, right, there are people now you know, who are going through these Terminator you know, kind of visions, like, oh, my God, this stuff is going to take over the world and what have you, people who don't really understand what's actually going on. And, of course, we had that letter from you know, all kinds of people saying, oh, this is a big concern. We need to step back. Mind you, some of that was by people who are a little behind who need to catch up, but that's a separate point. Um, but I think fundamentally there are big questions like what's going to happen? How do we control this? Um, there are obviously potentially concerns with uh, foreign nation influence. All of those factors come into play, right? Because if we start to have these algorithms feed us information in a way that we don't expect, that's, you know, is legitimately obviously a very big concern. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of questions like, hey, tell us how this works. Help us explain what you're doing so we can understand this as the leader. Remember, though, that, again, there are plenty of other companies who are doing very similar work. Google just had their I.O. event where they talked about their answers to what that's, that's being done. And by the way, you know, Google actually originated most of this research that now is being leveraged by OpenAI. Microsoft, as I said, is doing the same. We're seeing all of these big companies do this. So, but I think fundamentally around this, you know, the, the questions I think are going to have to be around those types of issues around security, around safety, and, and things like that. It, it feels like, as usual, Europe is way out ahead of us on this, on regulation of this, right? Like, why Why is it so, I mean, you know, they're a diverse collection of all these different countries and we can't even get it together. Very simple things like, if you are interacting with AI or looking at an AI-generated image, it needs to it be tell, has to tell you yeah. that it is. Like, how simple is that? Why not just enact something like that? Or, I mean, and I don't know that this is federal legislation, but like, how many, how, anecdotally, how many people have told you that they've been writing term papers using chat GPT? It is rampant right now, at least on an anecdotal base, basis. Like, there's just really, yeah, I mean, you don't need to understand how AI works to know that that's an issue. what should be and what should not be on a certain level, right? No, you're absolutely right, Julie. And, and, you know, the issue is you're starting to see companies do this, right? I mean, Google at I.O. said we are going to do watermarking, essentially, you know, notifying the ways in which we do this. Uh, Adobe has talked about that because Adobe is doing image uh, generation work. Mm -hmm. So they're doing that. There are companies who've been out there before this really exploded looking at some of the watermarking types of technologies. So I think you're right. We have to do this. It is. Europe has already gotten way ahead of us on this. They, you know, they did that with with privacy as well. Um, they just are much more sensitive, sensitive to those things. And they're just being much more conscientious about it. We're much more, we're still, you know, cowboy, wild, wild west kind of a country in a lot of ways. And, you know, it gets reflected in, in these kinds of, of motions or lack thereof. Mm. Um, so I think you're right. I think there are some very obvious things that need to be done um, and, and need to be quantified. And, and then people are, have to figure it out. I mean, there's so many questions out there. Uh, around this technology. I, I happen to be doing a survey myself right now as part of my work um, of what companies are going to use generative AI for and if they're going to use it, why and how. And it's still too early to say for sure. But It's not everybody on everything? Yeah, no, not, <laughs> not quite yet. But That's it, what it feels like I right know. now. And, and I think a lot of people are, are seeing that. It really is interesting to, again, I just have some of the early beginnings. I'd be happy to come back and share with you when I have it all done because I think it'll be great. But... Um, but I, I think that people are toying with everything from, gosh, do we actually replace bodies now? Mm. Or is this something we can do later? 
Um, you know, the, there was the comments from uh, IBM CEO uh, uh, about a week and a half ago about how they're not going to fill existing uh, empty roles because they think eventually AI can do that. So you got a lot of people who are scared about this. But let's remember, every technology transition that has ever happened in the history of the world has caused people to lose certain jobs and move on to other jobs. Mm. That isn't necessarily a death knell. It's evolution of how society and economies work. Right. And so I think a lot of people get caught up with the scary side of things, you know, and all these horrific stories of it, everything taking over the world. There is immense power and capability in what some of this stuff can do. But of course, to quote Spider-Man, with great power <laughs> becomes great responsibility. So they do have to figure it out. And so back to your original question, I think there's going to be a lot of questions like, what can we do? What can we allow? What do we need to tell people about? And, and then how do we think about this? And it's going to take a while for people to, you know, kind of really let it soak in like, gosh, what can this do? And how can we leverage it? I think what's different about this, I, I kind of made a joke earlier versus say crypto and some of the other buzzy things we've seen happen is that we've probably all set, tried it ourselves, right? We didn't necessarily, I mean, maybe you all guys all did a bunch of crypto. I didn't, my kids did, but, um, but it wasn't necessarily something that you could immediately see. Like the first time you try some of these things, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. And so, and you recognize the potential opportunity that you can have. And um, I, I just did a, a, a piece for USA Today that just came out last Friday and explaining, you know, to, to the mainstream folks about, hey, you know, you have to write emails, you search the internet all the time. This is going to change the way you do those kinds of basic things mm -hmm. in a fundamental way. And in fact, you're going to go back, you know, a year from now and, and think, gosh, the way I used to do that was archaic, it's right. really old. Um, Time intensive, for sure. Yeah. Now, to your question about chat GPT generated term papers, yeah, there's a lot of things that have to get figured out, right? Yeah. Um, there are issues that have to be dealt with. Uh, and people have to get smarter about the way they do it. I, I will tell you an interesting little story I read once, uh, speaking of that uh, in education. One professor, rather than ignore things like chat GPT, he said, I want my students to really learn it. So what they did is they initially said, right, you know, basically have it generate a paper on XYZ topic. But they were all relatively generic and obviously fairly similar. But he taught them that this idea of a prompt. So if you've used any of these conversations, right. you have to be smart about what you type in right. to the prompt. And there's now prompt engineers and there's this old technology development happening around doing smarter prompts. Right. And the, the gist of the story is, by learning how to write better prompts, it generated significantly better output. So the trick was learning how to write the prompts, not necessarily even the output. And it was a very clever way of thinking about this. And I think, again, that's just, we're just at the adapt, tip of yeah. this stuff. Just to kind of uh, put a bow on the event with Congress today. Congress is typically, or when it does happen on, is it today or Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Everything's running together. Yeah. On Tuesday, <laughs> when this event takes place and you have a Congress that has typically been behind the eight ball in trying to understand new technology, whether that's the blockchain, whether that's metaverse, whether it's social media, they typically just ask questions about how do you make money or how are users protected? What is the number one question that they could ask to Sam Altman about generative AI that would at least set the tone or signal to the broader American public and consumer that, okay, Congress might actually get this or be on a pathway to understanding? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think they would have to ask about uh, limits and controls. How far can it actually go? Mm. You know, and, and so that they, they set sort of a boundary. Because right now I think there's this sense that there's literally no boundaries around this. And so I think if they can understand where the boundaries are uh, and what's, gonna, uh, what's keeping it sort of within reins, um, I think that would be a starting point. Yeah. You know, and then understanding, again, where the information is coming from, what information is being used, um, dealing with trust issues. I mean, you know, Lord knows, unfortunately, we've gotten to this point in the world where there's, it's very difficult to know what you can and can't trust. And this, unfortunately, in some ways, is definitely going to make it worse, right? So you have to be aware of that. And so we have to learn to understand what we can do. And 
part of it is just, you know, oh, transparency, really. It's uh, a lot of times with this stuff. It is about being transparent uh, about what the technology can and can't do. Right? It's just as important to know what it can't do as what it can do. And then knowing that and explaining that in a way that people can understand and then kind of learning, all right, now, how can we you know, use this for good? And what are the opportunities? In the meantime, you're gonna to have to have a whole bunch of people who are super smart on the cybersecurity side and everything else figuring out, hey, we gotta be a step ahead of the bad guys because they're gonna use it too. So how do we prevent that? And, and that's gonna be an ongoing challenge for, for a while. Bob, thanks so much for hanging out with us this thanks. morning. Thanks, enjoyed it. Absolutely, Bob O'Donnell, Technologist Research President and Chief Analyst. Appreciate the time. Yep. Absolutely.